Greetings and welcome to my channel. I'm Silo Man and I hope you enjoy the next 20 minutes. As you see, again, what we're doing at this particular Atlas F site outside of Roswell, New Mexico. In this particular photograph, you can see we have a portable water tank that we go and we don't have a well at the, this particular site. So at that point, we bring in water normally on a weekly basis but you can see how we do this with a portable tank on a small trailer. Right now what we're doing is we're cleaning out the septic tank. The septic tank hasn't been cleaned in probably about almost 60 years since the site was operational and deactivated in 1965. We're pumping a lot of fresh water through it, also the lines from the, uh, the sewer manhole itself. This is part of the septic tank. This septic tank is 1,800 gallons. You can see as we're finding stuff. It's been ex exposed. They've, they've removed and lost the lids. And, and so anyway, there's lots of dust and dirt that's inside the tank, so we've removed all of that. in the process of pumping right there. <laughs> and as you can see, we've got a person down there. They're fairly large. I mean, you can nearly stand up in this particular tank itself. In the background there, you'll notice the small concrete circular pad that's above the surface right there. That was for the original blast detection system. In the event of a nuclear explosion, there was a, a piece of equipment mounted on top of that base that could detect the flash of a nuclear weapon, which at that point went inside to the control center and would shut down all of the blast valves, which allowed the air to come in and to go out of the site itself. You can see some of the, the debris that we're pulling out of the septic tank. We ran a lot of bleach through this also. And then of course, one of the reasons you want to really flush the, the system very, very well is, is because bleach doesn't work with a septic tank. So we ran a lot of water through it. And there's a small tank that, that that's roughly 400 gallons. And, it, and normally when I go to town, um, I just stop and fill it up and then bring it out. And that normally occurs about once a week. Right there, as you can see, the side of, of that's just simply a, a ground level 1,000 gallon tank. And we used it just to start uh, having a water supply for the underground for the bathroom that we've just finished putting in. In the next few videos you're going to see how we did that. And there's another view of that tank. And we'll be backfilling this area and then putting a cover. In essence painting the top of this uh, tank itself. This is the front portion of the property coming in on the access road. And the access road is coming in from Highway 380 to the south, and are just simply double gates. And there, we're just finishing putting them together. Well, back underground, you can see as we're, we're trying to quickly finish all the mudding and taping on the, the, the newly built non-bearing uh, center petition. We ran quite a bit of electrical in it, so each side of that uh, lower level of the control center will have lots of electricity if needed. And then we've got the open area for the shelving. And that'll go in at a later date. We're starting to clear out quite a bit of the stuff there.
some of that furling is going to be used in uh, the area where the shelving will, will be going into and it'll just simply hold a piece of sheetrock as you can see right there just temporary until we come back with the, uh, uh, the shelving. Originally this lower level of the control center was divided. Uh, one side was for radio equipment, communication equipment, and the other side was basically the area in which the five-man launch crew would launch the Atlas F missile if the emergency war order came in from the president. In that particular open area we'll be putting in another 200 amp panel with 40 slots. So. But we haven't at this point. Back up. And again, the lower level. These two openings that you see, really, uh, we're just using that basically as airfo uh, airflow. Uh, there's the sump area. We pulled one of the plates off. And that's roughly four feet from the bottom of the lower level floor to the concrete floor. And we're just starting to paint the primer. We'll be putting one good coat of primer on all of this and then we're going to come back and trim it all out and you'll be seeing that in just a few moments. This has truly been a fun project. There we have Manny, he's, he's going ahead and going around with, uh, we're, we're using an oil-based kills as a primer. And it's the low odor, so it doesn't, we wouldn't use the other, it would basically cause us, we couldn't stay down there. Anymore. And there we got the, the trim on the bottom put in. Got all the outlets in, we just need to energize each individual circuit at this point. We've got two quad boxes um, per circuit. So we can run in those, those are 20 amp uh, outlets. So we can run quite a bit of electricity if needed. And we've trimmed out around where the, the shelving is gonna go. All of these photographs were taken in late July of, of 2019. And you can see those open air holes that lead to uh, in front of where the shelving is going to go. We'll be putting a, an open grating over those in which we can allow the air to flow. We'll have outside air plus we'll have the inside so there'll be plenty of circulation for air. We have no heating and cooling at all in this particular site. Uh, basically low humidity also between roughly about 40% on average relative humidity. There we're on the upper level. You can see where the emergency backup generators lines come into the upper level of the control center. We have a sub-fed panel right there that you saw on the right. 
This is where we're walking around. It's a nice area. We just simply went with an eight foot open petition. In fact, behind where you're looking at now could be for storage. And that's ultimately what I was doing at this point, was just simply using it to store different things. Again, another picture back there. And you can see some of the stuff there in the background that it was simply out of sight, out of mind, so to speak. The bulk of all of this will go in uh, underneath the lower level floor. It's completely dry down there and again as I've said it's four feet. So a lot of this will be stored down there until I come back in and make shelving and this and that. And then at that point we can bring it out. Uh, you can see our temporary sleeping arrangements. We got a couple inflatable beds. We got a couple twin beds. There's the upper level. You can see the center column coming down from the ceiling. This area itself from the upper level floor to the upper level concrete is roughly 10 feet, zero inches. Here's another shot looking over at what's going to become the new bathroom and also the utility room. The area that's just coming into view that has right there that has not been sheetrocked, we've got another sleeping arrangement there. That will be the kitchen. We still need to run the electrical for the outlets and then of course rock it in mud and tape it. This will become either a bedroom or an office, and we're simply using it for storage at this point. Those two open areas, that will be shelving also. And again, we're back downstairs to the lower level, and you see us bringing the stuff from up on the upper level, bringing it down, that will all be put underneath the floor. And we're starting to pull the plate off. And we've got the plate off on the other side of the lower level. See, we've got the saw set up to cut the angles for the trim. And there we've opened up one of the plates. You can see some of the, the uh, oh, I have drawn a blank here. Uh, some of the tubs that we're using to store stuff that we can set down here. There we have Manny moving stuff down. And there's David, he's helping us move the stuff in. You guys are great workers. And we got quite a bit of, of, of equipment that we're using constantly, being IE plumbing, electrical, as you can tell. Some of the non-used items at this point, we're just we're going ahead and moving them under. Once we get all of that down there, then it frees us up to finish the floor. Uh, we'll do a light sand on all of that and, and give it one more coat of an acid bath, phosphoric acid, and then come back and hit it with a primer. And then eventually, when this is all just about ready to go, then we'll come back and hit it with a color. Same things on the walls. We did knock out the trim, but the walls basically are just primed. They're waiting for the color coat. And as you can see, there's a chair rail roughly at five feet. And at that point, there'll, there'll be a two-tone. So you'll have one color underneath and one color on top. Which is kind of exciting. It's only taken me, what, 22 years <laughs> on this particular site, but it's really been a labor of love. Um, but she's just about done.
and you can see the chair, chair rail for the trim to put through. Two, once the colors have all, all been uh, chosen and put ap applied, and then we'll come back and put in the fixed lighting that you'll see us run along the, uh, some of the I beams and some of the unistrut that you see connected to the ceiling. We won't be using that cast iron drain line, it'll be taken out eventually, but we're just waiting until we get everything else done. see some of the work we're going to be doing on the floor. The bondo we've used to fill in the cracks between the steel plating. And you can see again, we started the sanding. You see it's a little dusty in there. That's from all the sanding that we've done. We're starting to prep that floor. And there you have it. Now we're bringing in the, the true sealer for the floor itself. This would be the primer coat. It's a Rust-Oleum based paint, oil base. About halfway through it. Other side. I'm starting to paint the outside edge. Come in with the rollers and knock the interior out. been a fun project. I recommend it for anybody that wants a little of excitement. Let's find you an old missile base and have some fun with it. And the other side is the Well, this almost concludes this 20 minute episode. I thank you all for watching. Uh, please, if you would, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hit that bell for updates that I'll be doing. I've got a, a couple more in the shoot that shoot's going to bring you up to where we are exactly at this moment here in January of 2020. So you'll be seeing that over the next day or two. Uh, I've got two more, uh, I believe, in the shoot. Then at that point, I'm going to back up and do it the other way. Again, thank you all so much for everything. And uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.